Welcome back. Eamon Fingleton is with us, economics journalist, contributor of Forbes.com, the author of numerous books, including In the Jaws of the Dragon, his website, Fingleton, F-I-N-G-L-E-T-O-N dot net. And uh, Eamon, we had a caller earlier, a fellow by the name of Pete, who, sa- who wanted to know, what would happen if the U.S. dollar was uh, no longer recognized worldwide as the as the, uh, the currency of international trade in large part because it's the, the, the currency in which oil is denominated? Well, I, I, I think that it would happen gradually, uh, and it, frankly, it will happen. Uh, it, it's not a question of if, but it, um, uh, over the next um, 20, 30 years, the, the dollar will gradually be th- dethroned in several of its capacities as, as the uh, currency of, of, of the world order. At some point, probably, you know, commodities will start being denominated in something other than dollars, might be a basket of currencies. Uh, we don't know, but I, I, I think that if we have any faith at all in our financial masters, we, we have to assume that they will try to plan this so that uh, there's no particular one day when it'll all be shockingly mm-hmm. obvious. Yeah, when that happens, or as that transition happens, is that going to be basically the end of American empire, or the crash of the dollar, or hyperinflation, or is that simply going to be? Oh, isn't that interesting? You can buy oil in euros now. Well, I think it will be accompanied eventually uh, by a very drastic devaluation of the dollar. This is assuming that America doesn't get its trade position under control. Oh, that's interesting. And and uh, what is our trade position right now? Well, um, the current account deficit, which is the widest and most meaningful uh, measure of American trade, uh, runs between... Uh, four and six percent of GDP, which is an absolutely huge number. Um, it's particularly huge when you remember that uh, manufacturing is now down to eleven percent of GDP, and services uh, hardly export. Most services have to be performed within the country, uh, and those services that do export tend to be weak in exporting. Um, so you're relying on your exp- uh, for your exports on a manufacturing sector down to 11% of the uh, economy, and you've got this huge gaping hole in the trade of 5% typically, typically of GDP uh, of a deficit. How do you, how do you, um, how do you close that gap? Uh, mm-hmm. The problem is now an epochable, epochal one. Uh, it's just um, there seems to me no way out. Um, America's on the skids. Wow. Well, couldn't we couldn't we just kind of wake up one day and say, you know, let's go back to having tariffs, or let's do a VAT tax and have a functional tariff, uh, you know, that we can reverse out on exports and we can double down on imports the way Germany well, does. A I, 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 very good <clears throat> the first um, uh, first move would be to bring in a uh, value added tax, uh, as you su- suggest. Uh, that would be number one, mm-hmm. and it would be perfectly in line with trade treaties and all the rest of it, so there would be no problem doing that. Um, I, I think longer term, or maybe it should be in the short term, um, the U.S. should be looking at tariffs because free trade is not working for the United States. That's obvious. You look at the, all these factories. I, I, I often travel from New York to uh, uh, Washington and uh, all through New Jersey and Pennsylvania, all these factories just rotting hulks. Uh, um, it should be obvious to everybody that everybody that there's something wrong. Yeah, it's, it's it's like a giant sign. I mean, you you go past miles and miles, and not just the factories, the, the the miles and miles of row houses that were once filled with the people who worked in the factories, and are now they look like a they look like Dresden. You know, it's, they're just these bombed out hulks. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. As a reporter, are you seeing any evidence? of a move toward a protectionist trade policy in the United States? It seems to me like not only are we not doing that, but we've got a president who's talking about, you know, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, about expanding free trade rather than restraining it. Um, You're right. It it is amazing that uh, virtually nobody in Washington seems to get it. Um, I I, I think in in the uh, country as a whole in the United States, uh, um, people have always been skeptical of free trade, and I think probably even more now than ever. But uh, a majority, certainly, uh, if you had a referendum, would be against free trade, would be against this uh, Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership. 
And yet the big corporations, the big transnational corporations, they see this as a way to radically increase their profits, expand their markets. They don't care that it's hurting the United States. Other countries have been smart enough to put into place VAT taxes or maintain tariffs or, or other trade restrictions. You know, the, there's a whole variety of them. I mean, you wrote the book on it. Um, uh, what, what's, what's made America so stupid? Um, I, I think it's a failure of American democracy, perhaps. Um, I, I'm actually writing a book on this at the moment, and uh, it's a history of American decline. Uh, looking back over the last 40, 50 years, uh, mm. basically since I went to college in 1965, which seems to me to have been the absolute zenith for the American way of life. Um, it's been downhill all the way since then. Um, um, and nobody's taking responsibility, almost nobody. Um, the, the press is not taking responsibility. The politicians are not taking responsibility. The politicians are just touting for... for uh, uh, contributions, uh, and they will do whatever the uh, contributors ask them to do. Um, uh, so it goes around in a circle. Aren't there some incredible parallels between that and the Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover administrations? I mean, Warren Harding, Harding came into office in 1921 on the slogan of uh, more, more, more business in government, less government in business. And he immediately dropped the top income tax rate from 90% down to 25%. Right, yeah. I, uh, certainly, all, all this talk about taxes is completely irrelevant. You can have a very successful economy with high tax rates, uh, and uh, the, there's no uh, a correlation between tax rates and, and the um, success of an economy. Uh, as you know, uh, an economy like Sweden is very successful. Mm -hmm. Tax rates there are high and always have been. Yeah. Eamon, Eamon Fingleton. Eamon, it's always, it's always a pleasure, and it's always illuminating talking with you. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Tom. Eamon Fingleton, a e economics journalist and contributor at Forbes.com. Check out his book, In the Jaws of the Dragon, and his website, fingleton.net.